All right, beautiful people, let's get this tutorial on. So first, the um, guest of honor today is this tube filler that I got from Tiller Craft and this gold handle that I actually got from another vendor here in Lagos. Another accessory that's going to make an appearance is this lovely bag lock. So before we jump in, let's, let me just give you guys a basic of how I came up with this pattern. So the whole saddle bag shape is like the semicircle thing that it has going on, but I had to use that to sort of figure out the remaining parts of the bag itself. So the same semicircle, I just sort of traced it on another piece and I cut it out. And to get these two C shapes, I just cut the same thing and I just sort of, uh, I think it was like about two centimeter that I just trimmed all the way around so if you want to make this bag this is just let you know that it's not going to be exactly like this it's going to be slightly different and for the side piece to get this length is the inner part of your C shape so this is a very simple um, pattern drafting that's why I didn't make a different video for it it's very simple it's very straightforward so these are the measurements that I use for my own. I don't know if you can get these exact numbers, but you can try if you want. It's fine by me, but I'm just letting you ahead of time that it's not going to be the same. So I'm using the width of the bag handle to sort of figure out where our tube filler is going to sort of start from. I actually wanted to do it straight originally, but I was like, uh, let me make it look intentional. So right from the middle of where our handle is going to stay i sort of just sort of like took i think that's like give or take one centimeter into the bag um, shape itself so when you're using tube fillers i don't know if other people have used this in different ways but i just i'm using mine for like a detailing type of thing that is why it's actually going to be like this people use this for handles or many other things the, the functions are lim they are unlimited but i'm using mine for detailing because the teal is kind of cool but i wanted to just give it like some extra oomph so i'm just going to follow the line where our handles are going to sort of like pop out from and i'm going to follow that line all the way down and i am cutting it in the middle obviously because our bag lock has to sort of sit well and you can't really do that if the tube filler is going to go through where the bag um, lock is going to be so i'm going to gum this one first this is the first thing i'm doing before any other thing this is very important this is going to make a huge difference so i'm just going to slope this in carefully you want to make sure that you don't cut your hand when you're doing this and i'm doing this for the two sides so it just looks like okay it was an intentional thing and we weren't just being sloppy about our detailing so if you want the tube fillers, you can actually check the description. I'm going to put a link to the vendor that sent this to me. Her name is Tila Craft. They sell like really awesome accessories and hardware. And they are here in Lagos and they could deliver anywhere to you, anywhere you are in the country. So again, we are using our favorite type of adhesive, which is the contact adhesive. And I have a new brush. If you notice, usually my brush is always covered in dried gum. I had to get this new one from the market. You can use any type of brush. I always like to use this red ones. It's the one inch for, um, I think these are pa painters use this one too. Yeah. So that is like my favorite type of paintbrush. So I'm going to put the contact adhesive on the stiffness and on the material itself. I really love this color. It's so gorgeous. So to now put the main piece you don't want to just rub it in once you want to first carefully so i use my hand sort of like just spread it out to make sure i didn't make any mistake and even with that i still sort of flopped a bit but here i am using the magnificent bone folder for the detailing i'm just going to so the subscriber that asked me about bone folders this is like a perfect example of what to use for your tight foldings like this because if you use something that is too sharp it may ruin it so these tools are specifically made for things like this. So I'm just going to like smooth out all the corners and everything before we move into the tutorial itself. So as you can see off camera, I've already fused everything to the stiffener. So now it's time to do the next step and you know what it is, which is to fold it in. And to do that, you are going to sort of put about one inch of um, contact adhesive basically just enough 
that is going to touch both the stiffener and the outer part of the material so i'm just going to do that and anything you see me doing on one trust me off camera i did it on all i'm just doing i'm just taking one 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 at a time so i don't waste your time or waste your data or just waste anything so i'm just going to fold it in so there's something i did because this is like my first time using this type of um gusset in a bag so it was when i started folding this um c-shaped stiffeners i was like okay i think i'm making a mistake but i wasn't sure <laughs> it was when i got up to the laser part and i was like oh now i see what i was doing wrong so i'll show you guys how i remedied the error but till then let's deal with the other parts of the bag too so quickly we're just going to fold this ones in lucky for me this teal um synthetic leather it was really soft and malleable so it obeyed every command that i gave it <laughs> it's like the best material to work with when it comes to this wrapping method it's it just it's so easy so good most times you get to deal with very stiff ones and they don't bend easily but this one was just like milk it was just obeying every every fold and everything i was just laying it was just taking it all right so we're already seeing the shape of our saddle bag it's already showing it's already looking gorgeous so this one the um the next thing oh, is to put the lock obviously or rather just cut the holes out so that um after we have put the lining or the under part of these pieces it's not going to look so tacky so first is i just sort of pressed the upper part of the lock on the flap itself to sort of just press an outline and that's what i'm now using as a guide to do my cutting okay please don't do this without a cutting mat that's why i have that piece of cellulose board under it even though i was going to literally just destroy my table surface so usually i set the whole lock up at least to be able to deduce exactly where it's going to stay in the piece under it it's usually easier that way it's a lazy man's method but it actually works most times because when you measure sometimes you make mistakes and it's, <clears throat> it doesn't really come out well so now i just sort of press it and let the two bottom legs um, leave marks rather on the lower part so i just poke two holes and that is what i use to fix the lower part because that's the part you need to fix now you don't fix this after your lining you fix it before your lining your lining is supposed to cover the back so your bag is going to look neat and it's going to make a lot of sense so always make sure you press it in really tight before you bend down the grappling legs or the grappling hooks whatever they call them so now i'm going to take off the bag lock and we can move on to fixing the linings So this one is going to be very quick i just have a piece of um i think i'll call this velvet normally don't you push don't mind me i don't know why i'm like this i'm the most unprofessional professional i don't know what's wrong with me so we're just going to rub some contact adhesive on the um main piece itself if you are using something like um, a lighter synthetic leather you can rub on both of them but when you are using this method on fabric, I just like to avoid it because I'm, if, I'm still going to sew it. So I'm not worried about anything opening or exposing the inner part of the bag. We're still going to sew everything in. So even if it doesn't fuse all through, it fuses enough that it stays in place and nothing's going to ever open it ever. So we're using our awesome binder clips to hold the fabric down to the the outer piece before we take this to our cylinder bed industrial sewing machine god i sound like an ad to just sew only the top we're not sewing it round just the top for now before we move to other things so now it's time to fix the bag handles and as you can see why i wanted to align it because i wanted it to look intentional even if we make mistakes i don't like to make mistakes and make them look like mistakes i want them to look like okay that was an intentional decision that i made so i'm just going to cut two slits right at the middle of the top of the bag so that is why i always like to mark those three lines that indicate the top of the bag then one line in between to mark the middle so i'm just going to pass um through a folded piece of synthetic material 
Okay. okay, I'm going to do it for the two sides. So I, I had to clip one down because the thing wasn't staying. But this is like my favorite method for fixing because it's always really tight. And because it's fabric, sorry, because it's just synthetic leather, you, there's no stiffener needed. It's usually very easy to sew. And it's, it's never really disappointed me because people tend to wrap these things to make them look nicer. But when it's too thick and your thread keeps cutting and you can't sew through it, it's, hmm, it's always another problem. So when I pull this through like this, because I couldn't sew the front and the back of the slits that the bag handle um, um, thingies went through, I had to now sort of like push them to the back and sew on that side. So I know that it's a small purse, so whatever I carry in this bag is never going to pull it out. So now we're going to just trim out our excess lining. And don't forget to trimming it in. You need it to move in at most half a centimeter you need to see the material so here is me still sticking to my ways I, I i was really confident that this thing was going to turn out differently but i don't know what's wrong with me so after putting your adhesive on the main pieces then instead of just lay it on your lining you can use cotton i think some people use linen like this um velvet always gives like a like a faux suede kind of thing without really having to deal with the thickness of suede leather so i'm just going to go on and clip the ends of all three of them that is the one long piece that goes from the side to the bottom to the other side of the bag and i'm going to sew the same i'm going to do the same thing for the two c-shaped stiffeners okay so this is when i now realized that what i was in was a bad idea so eventually i now went and had to gum the lining to the outer part because we are sewing this on the wrong side I, I think that was when i was like okay i think i figured it out so if you're doing this this is the method that you are using you are gumming the lining and it's going to cover the edge a bit instead of the way that c-shaped thing whatever that c-shaped thing is doing that is not right the other piece this piece it's the right thing so that when you are sewing it like this you get it now it's not going to be all black through instead of what you're seeing now that the teal is showing so i had to correct my mistake but i'm like yeah it's my bag so i'm just going to stick with it but if i was making this for a customer now i'd have had to make like a new piece entirely oh so tedious all right so now that we have clipped this we're going to clip the two sides to the main piece itself then we take that to the sewing machine and then we sew it all the way like just two c's like that and that is how you make this type of gusset so this is the third type of gusset that i'm showing you guys now for structured bags if you have watched my other videos i have never made this this is like my first time making this type of gusset i saw this on um on another creator's page and i was like oh yeah this really exists i should try this out so and i think it's super easy you can even use like flat bed like if you have like a really good um like the mono butterfly you can actually use this type of method of um, gussets on it and it will work perfectly well so now let's just do this one side quickly so because this is not as thick as my former post the pink bag that was like super 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 thick so i was able to now do the synthetic leather for the under part of the flap too so first of all i like to start with my contact adhesive on only half of the piece itself so basically wherever the synthetic leather is going to join which is the flap and the top not the full thing just this side first before you move into on any other thing so i'm just going to check out my um alignment you have to be very careful because if they touch and it's not dry it's going to rip it's very sad but yes it's going to rip so before um any other thing i now decided to put some contact adhesive on the other part of the main piece so this one that is like this now i'm going to now sort of smooth the fabric over even without letting it dry because this is is just for the other side so now we're going to sew this before we now start our closing so you want to take as much time as you need you don't have to rush it because whenever i'm doing like anything that has to do with finishing or the outer part of a bag i am always super careful because whenever they look at your bag that is the first thing people are going to see 
so this is what our gusset looks like with two c-shaped stiffeners and one long band so if you guys want me to try this type of thing again I, i'm really excited because it's so simple just let me know in the comment section like what we should make with this type of gusset again i really like it, it was perfect for this saddle purse and i want to do this again i need to do this again what should i make with this type of gusset put it in the comment section let's let's talk about it so i'm just going to clip everything and sew them together because the thing was so comfortable i didn't have to do one side and bring it back clip it then do the other side so you see the way it's just sort of sitting on the cylinder bed and because i used like two centimeter width so there was a lot of room i didn't really have to like fuss about whether i was going to be able to sew com comfortably without even ripping the leather itself so i'm just going to sew the two semicircles and um yeah that was like the last thing because i didn't even have to add any other i think yeah after the bag lock yeah i didn't have to add any other thing to it it was like super easy super comfortable to sew and i don't know why i haven't used this method even like in my normal bags that i sell i don't know why i've not used this method before i do not know what's wrong with me i guess maybe i was just freaked out thinking it was difficult or something but apparently it's even one of the easiest ones i've ever had to deal with so the last um, thing to do now is just to quickly reattach our lock so i'm just going to open the um, under part of the flap that was sealed in with the lining area so i'm just going to open that and quickly just pop back the the other part of the bag lock and then we're ready to take up our bag to rock i love this bag so much i can't wait to take this out i'm already imagining the outfit in my head like hmm where are we gonna go how are we gonna style this bag <laughs> what do you guys think about this tutorial personally me i like it though. you can hear it in my voice like it was it was breezy it was easy breezy for me so don't forget to like and subscribe i love you guys so much thanks for watching if you watch this far oh my you, you are the really, really og thanks for watching this tutorial thanks for stopping by to my youtube channel i love you and i guess i'll see you in my next posts